<clears throat> the month of May has been all about moving into gentleness, moving into just walking our little spirit and not overtaxing ourselves to, to command matter like we typically do. Have you enjoyed the break? Okay. So, let me remind you, just so you can bring these things up to your mental files forward, open the files for you. All right, the first service was the power of gentle. We talked about how to get out of the path of others. We talked about how not to invite mourners onto our path. And we talked about finding peace before we step into our intention. Ah, oh, you remembering? Okay. The next week was the mother's love. We talked about accepting and sustaining, that love that accepts and sustains, and that we are all born of love, no matter what it appeared in that moment in time. The next week, love your neighbor. Patrick told us, don't withhold. That's our superpower for many of us, withholding. And um, he also said, forget where you've been and remember who you are. Quite a commandment to live up to. Last week we talked about giving forth love. We talked about offering grace to others. We talked about passing by the debt of others and letting all the balloons go. Now, if you don't remember any of this or any of it sounds intriguing and you missed it, they are all on YouTube. If you watch it, do hit like afterwards. That was funny. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Today is one world, one heart. I live in a world of God love. There are so many different ways to go with this because there are so many different worlds. Um, so, if we think of everything that we use and enjoy in this world, more than half of it, probably more than, more than half, probably a great deal of it, is sustained by mankind's energy. More than half, a great deal more than half, of what we enjoy in our world requires mankind to put his energy into it in order to sustain it. It's not a bad thing, it just is. Our energy, our transportation, these are ways we have chosen to experience Earth. You know, we put the gas in our car, but somebody had to get the fuel, process it, bring it to us, blah, 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 blah. We just turn the switch on the wall. We think there's magical elves in the wall. No, there are machines and electrical buildings that create this for us. It requires mankind's investment of energy. So we experience it and we enjoy it, yes? Could we have done it differently? Could we have created a world that did not require all of this input? Jesus says, your Father knows you have need of all of these things. Is it possible we could have done it differently? Something to think about. So, we've created a world that is dependent on our human input, human energy. Because of that, we serve the idea that sustains what is. Because of that, we serve the idea that sustains what is. Okay. So, in Jesus' time, the Roman Empire needed obedience from its people. The Jewish faith needed agreement and participation. So that occurred to sustain what was. It doesn't even matter that it isn't a technological era. Even in that day and time, people had to put their energy into what was occurring in order to have it sustained. With me? All right, all faiths and religions and governments need support through allegiance. And allegiance is, you have my energy no matter what. Do you feel that? Mm -hmm. Allegiance, you have my energy no matter what. We used to, when I was a wee one, do the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. I don't know if they still do it any longer. Mm -hmm. Do they? Okay. So, and in that consciousness, we are literally saying, Yes, I, you have my energy no matter what, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. We love this country. We want the country to have our energy no matter what. But how many other things call forth our allegiance that we even forget we've chosen, that we even forget we have chosen to participate in? So, so many things drawing energy from us. How do we really know who we are? Everybody free. 
So we're going back to Jesus' time and Jesus' teachings. When Jesus came in as a child, he said to the priest who was slaying the animals for the sacrifice, Why are you doing that? And the priest said to him, Who are you, you little boy? Get out of here. And so Jesus said, Great. And he went to Hillel, who was in charge. And he said, Master, why are you doing this? And Hillel said, well, it's kind of what we've always done. And he said, why? And Hillel had no answer. Because Hillel loved God, and he saw the love of God in the child. And so he said, let us go find the love of the, this God of love together. That's what Hillel said to Jesus. And he studied with him. He was a little kid. He studied with this master teacher. Went along his journeys, went out, saw the Brahmic people. He said, why do you guys have caste systems? What, what, what is that about? And they said, because that's how it's always been. And he said, hmm, but my God is a God of love, so that makes no sense to me. And they said, get out of here, you smart mouth teenager. You know nothing. And they kicked him out. And he said to the people on the streets, why do you worship this shrine that has no soul? It's just a piece of wood. Do you not know God lives in your heart? And all the Brahmic people went, ooh, what? And he started talking to them about this place within them. Do you see what he's doing? We might think religiously, oh, he's just turning everybody to God. Oh, it's okay. But energetically, what is he doing? He's saying, you guys have been investing your power into ideas outside yourself, and you have forgotten how to choose. You've forgotten how to find God of your soul and your spirit. And you're following all these teachings and techniques and things that are not bringing you fulfillment or oneness or happiness. With me? Your power is outside of yourself. This is the message that continued throughout his ministry to the Jewish people. Why? Where is your love? What does God say to you inside? He said, make your human hearts your altars. I am your brother. I'm your brother. Make your human heart your altar. You don't have to go sacrifice because it says to. What's happening in you? And this is where he pointed them on. He said, man knows nothing by being told. How do you know metaphysics? Can I stand up here and tell you God loves you and you can manifest anything you want? And do you know it because I said it? Or do you know it the first time it happens? Do you know it when you're able to make it work? Do you know it when you turn to God and, and you're able to manifest something? Then do you know it? Man knows nothing by being told. He knows it when he becomes it. And that requires, where's the power? In your heart. Inside you. And where do you meet your God? In your heart. Inside you. Our world is so full of us plugging into and sustaining what is. And his whole message was unplug and figure out who you are. Unplug and find out who God is. So, don't let the world tell you who you are. And don't let the world tell you who God is. And he said this, and I wanted to read this one to you. It's chapter 83. There are two classes of the sons of men. Two types. They who build up the human race upon the sure foundation stones of justice, truth, equality, and rightness. Okay, does that sound like you? Justice, truth, equality, and rightness. Okay, good. And there are those who destroy the holy temple where the spirit dwells. What does it mean to destroy the holy temple where the spirit dwells? They tear down the essence of their brother man, where their spirit dwells. They tear down the essence of who you are. And they bring their fellows down to beggary and crime. When you destroy the fabric or seek to destroy the fabric of who someone is, their essence, what you take their power, their choice away. And then they are relegated, especially in that day and time, into beggary and crime. They have no power. They have no authority. Do you understand? So either we are building the race through seeing equality, through seeing love, through seeing harmony, 
or we are tearing it down through making people less than. It's a difficult one, isn't it? We think and we want to all be the, that first energy of, I'm building the race, I'm loving the race, but it can be quite challenging, can't it? Yeah, it's challenging. All right. Um, I was having a great day yesterday, Sydney story time. <laughs> A fabulous day. It was wonderful. It was our, my first Saturday off in, <laughs> and I do not know how many years. <laughs> you know, I didn't have to get up and teach seminary, and so I said, oh, Patrick, let's go shopping. So we went to Costco, and we're having a great time roaming out these feet and like, having fun, and we're talking to everybody we see. It's just a great time. I mean, we were laughing all the way through the store. Nobody was a stranger. Everybody's our friend. And truly, this how we roll. So, it was fabulous until we sat at lunch. And in the middle of the lunch, because I'm working on this service, one heart, one world, one God, I'm, I'm cruising in the energy, I want to really feel it. In the middle of lunch, he tells me about an article that he read that happened on the other side of the world to young people that I felt was absolutely horrendous. In the middle of lunch, I started to cry, in the middle of God and everybody. <laughs> and I started sending prayers to these children. They're, they're young people. They're young people. Prayers to them for divine intervention, for grace of their karma. How did this happen? Oh, I don't understand it. And it just overwhelmed me. And I kept saying, one heart, one world, one heart, one world. I have to honor and respect that. God, please intervene to everyone involved. Everyone involved, please intervene. Let there be love, let there be light, let there be grace. And then I had to kind of begin to let them go. One heart, one world. Their world was not a world I understand. But my heart was connected to them. Do you see? Do you see? And this is where it gets tough. Because I wanted to champion them. I wanted to get on the computer. I wanted to rally cause. I wanted to start screaming and hollering. Somebody championed those kids, but I couldn't. Because my faith says they're children of God, and the best championing of their cause is when I ask that God take them. I don't know their world. They live in a different world than I live in. Do you understand? It's a challenge, isn't it? It's a challenge not to judge what happened, not to take, not to champ. Anytime you're championing something, you're judging something. Do you realize that? We champion them. I'm judging them. I'm judging what happened to them. It's tough. So, beginning to breathe and to understand that as I pray for the softening of their karma, as I pray for the softening of this situation, as I pray that God's will move through their lives to make it whatever they need it to be, I'm respecting them and asking for their Christ and their lives to be made easy. For them. Do you see? And when I do that, we are in the one world. When we let life around us choose, there are so many different worlds, you guys. Do you realize that? There are so many different worlds. We get to choose the world we live in. And in my world, I have a happy time at Costco running around laughing at people. I didn't read the article. I wouldn't have read the article. I wouldn't have drawn it to me. Because it takes me days to process it. But it did. <laughs> Came through the side door. <laughs> How can we love and live in our beautiful world? without being drawn back into worlds that we don't want to sustain. So, that was my Cindy story. How do you find God when you are listening to an outer voice? How do you stay in God energy when an outer voice is louder than your own? And that outer voice for me got louder than my own in that moment. For many of us, it's our corporate voice, or it's our work voice, or it's our anybody's voice getting louder than our own. When that happens, where is our connection with God? 
Because God is within us, within our voice, within our heart. Do you see? Okay. Many worlds, let's go back to our energy now. Many worlds, and all worlds are fed by the people who plug their energy into them. The people who give them life and who make them happen. Without plugging in, in without the plugging in of humanity, these worlds would not exist. Did you guys hear? Without the plugging in of humanity, these worlds would not exist. One world that we don't create, one world that we do not have to plug into and to feed, is the world that we were created in. That is the one world we do not have to feed. This is the world that feeds us, is the world of spirit. When we stop plugging in and pull back and feel and let ourselves go to our natural space, we are lifted to the world of spirit where we are automatically fed. And Jesus, when he had an opportunity to teach, he taught them about this boundless joy that could occur on heaven, on earth, this heaven on earth. He taught them about moving into the energy where God does know you have needed these things. Let the energy flow and support you. And it can support us right now in our technological world. As many of you will attest to time and time again. But we're plugging, we're not plugging into feed or sustain. We're stepping into the world in which we are fed. Living in a world where God love feeds us. Namaste is the word that says the Christ in me beholds the Christ in you. And when the Christ in me sees the Christ in you, we are one. When I am in the high of me, when I am in my higher self, and you are in your higher self, we are one. There's no separation. When I am in my human self, and I'm jazzed about something, and you're in your human self, and you're jazzed about something else, we are opposites. We go different directions. But it does not negate the fact that the higher self, the perfection of me, the Christ in me, and the Christ in you are one. Because in the energy of this beautiful spirit, we are all brothers and sisters. Okay? All right. Until we can see the namaste, until we are in it, we cannot see it. Until we're in namaste, we cannot see it. You know, we have interpreted so many things so many different ways. And the overall perception of our world today is a duality. It's all up to me or take care of me. People, people typically live in one or both of those, those mindsets. It's either all up to me or take care of me. And where is God in this? The center where we can live as spirit is I'm in this space of God love where I'm supplied and supported. And in here, I am the creative child of God. It's not up to me. And I'm not asking anybody to take care of me. I'm letting this beautiful energy flow through me. So simple, isn't it? When we are in the energy of God love, there is truly one heart and one world. And we can love everyone around us. But we don't have to play in what they're creating. We can stay in our heart our world. One of the reasons, honestly guys, that brotherhood and love have failed historically is because we get caught in the dramas of our brothers and sisters. We derail. Instead of trying to live love and be love, if there's an issue or a problem, we go into that problem and that issue and we derail. Whole, whole com companies derail. Religions derail. And then we're, we're fighting a problem instead of trying to live a truth. Do you hear me? And, and, and the problems get so big because we're fighting against it. We are investing our energy in everything that we fight against and everything that we support, everything we give allegiance to. Metaphysical truth has been on the planet for eons. But beginning to actually harness it within and beginning to actually see it have an impact means that we have to hold the energy of God's love no matter what is happening around us. I live in a world of God's love. 
I live in a world of God's love. The tornado came over one day. We started praying, God. We asked that it passed without hurt or harming, passed over us and hit our neighbor. He said, pray for me next time. <laughs> Didn't even think it was going to hit the neighbor, but it did. Just their trees, just their trees. You know, no harm to the house. You see, we claim this space. We claim this space. We have to claim it in our heart. No matter what is rocking and rolling around us, I live in a world of God love. And if something comes on my path, which that did come on my path, that little story that was shared with me when I was happy, it did come on my path. Which you all got to understand. <laughs> and knowing that I live in a world of God love, and after I did all my work with the beings involved, do you think I did work on myself? Oh, absolutely. I sent prayers to myself to any time my soul had ever experienced being a participant at any level in religious persecution, in persecuting a human body, in anything, any time and space, if I've been a victim of it or a perpetrator. I don't want it in my world anymore. So I sent love and healing energy back to my own soul. See? I'm still working on it. But I'm choosing to live in the world of God's love. Choosing to live in the world of God's love. If I could gift you with anything as we close this series of gentleness, it would be to realize the power of love. That we're, the world says make a decision, make a decision, make a decision. Eh. Choose from your heart. That's where your freedom lies. Choose from your heart. And if your heart says hold, what do you do? How many can do that? Two, three, four, okay. All right, a few more, maybe. <laughs> Most of us are so programmed to go because the world wants us to go. Hold. Stay in the world of God's love. If I stay in the world of God's love, I am in love. I do not have to feed anything. Everything comes to me. I am fed. And when it is go, I am created. I don't have to fight something to write it. I just have to hold the energy of love. That's the challenge for the metaphysical Christian. And that's probably why we're small. Even over the years, metaphysical Christianity has been around, at least this last hundred years, has been flourishing, but still small. Because we're not fight. We try to be love. We try to allow. We try to be the Christ. And that keeps you from getting drawn into the world. Is that where you want to be? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. The Christ in me sees the Christ in you. I put in the newsletter uh, the 23rd Psalm. The 23rd Psalm is what we typically, Christendom has used when people cross over and die. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. When we studied it in uh, the Latin teachings of the Masters of the Far East, this was their interpretation of these lines. I'll read the traditional, and then I'll read the interpretation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Through the valley of death I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. It's simple. It's read by every priest when someone's crossing over. But this is what they say it really meant. Every want is already supplied. There is abundance to spare. My body and mind are at rest and peace. In the calm of my soul, I am pure and perfect. God is in the midst of me and all is well. I am illuminated for service. The true intention is life. It's support. It's not preparation to meet your maker. It's preparation to be the maker. It's life, it's support. I shall not want because I got everything I need. Everything is around me. Do you feel the difference? The interpretation is living in a world of God love. Don't have to do anything, don't have to plug in anywhere. You just are loved. Loved by God and love through you expressing. That is when 
you and I are one. They showed me a quick vision, and I'll close with this. Um, they said, Sumi, think about all the times you've forgiven people in the past. And I said, oh my goodness. You know, the history of 26 years of being a minister, I've had all sorts of interesting things occur directly at me. That I went, what? I didn't do that. But people's anger come toward the minister, and they get upset, and they, they, that's, you're their big reason for being rebel, rebellious or whatever. And I, they, I said, yeah, I've forgiven a lot. And I said, don't you remember? I said, no. So they showed me this big vision of all these people who said, you know, I need to do something really not nice to somebody, but I need to be forgiven for it. And whose hand do you think went in the air, Cindy? <laughs> Mine. Oh, that's fine. Do it to me. I'll forgive you. They said, you signed up for every single event that happened to you. Because you love these people. I love you enough to forgive me. Go ahead. Whack me. I love you enough. You signed up for every one of them. And I went, why? And they said, because you needed to believe that you were capable of forgiving that many times. To rat it all. <laughs> so everybody in the, my past, you're all welcome. And as I learn that I do not need to prove anything, I can be that love, that automatic energy that never has to forgive because it never judged, that never has to say, ouch, because it didn't even see it, didn't even see what happened. Moving into God's world. Have any of you signed up for things? Okay. So we can reassign our natures. Moving into the world of God love, where now we can create. And bless everybody around us. You'll still bless them because you love them. And then they may not have to have that experience. All right. This whole month, be gentle. Support yourself. Love your neighbor. Don't judge. You're born of love, and you live in love. There is nothing in this world that should pull you from your own heart. No religion, no outer commitment. It should all come from your heart. Say, I got it. I got it. Let's go with it. So just breathe and feel that beautiful love of God pouring over you. Feel the chair and feel your energy. God, our Father, our Mother, we feel you. Let your mind drop to your heart now. Let your mind drop to your heart. And in your heart energy, just imagine yourself dropping into a swirl of light. And ask as you move into the light, just go there now. Who am I? And here, child of God. No man takes my life except I give it. Step into that beautiful love, child of God. And Father, we ask that you unlock the heart vaults of each so the beautiful love that they are begins to move through their awareness. I am radiant and I am alive. And let that love pour through your body, your mind, and your spirit. There is nothing I need to do. I am God's child. Gently become aware of anything you have invested your energy in and leave it. Just become aware. I shall decide if those are my choice or not. But for now, I will just recognize I am supporting energies. 
I am supporting energy. Let your vision come back to the heart. I am child of God, and I choose. Father, Mother, God, flood each one with that beautiful energy of perfection. Perfect love, perfect peace, perfect joy. Fill them to overflowing with your light. And we are so very grateful, God. So very grateful that as we walk each day, there are moments where we walk with you. Feel that beautiful light around you. Feel the chair underneath you. Take a breath. And just bring your awareness back to yourself. I very rarely ask people to repeat after me, but if you will, those of you that are ready, I am a master. I am a master. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. And I now create my reality. And I now create my reality. And so it is. And so it is. Make out. Make out.